Hello everyone, in our previous video we discussed two of the most commonly used parameters of the ranking function, that is ranking methods and sorting options. These two parameters are essential for performing ranking operations on data frames using the rank function. In today's video, we'll be discussing additional parameters that can help refine the ranking function further. These parameters can make the ranking function more flexible and adaptable to different datasets. Additionally, we'll also explore the SQL equivalents of the ranking methods discussed, which will be helpful for those of you familiar with SQL. Let's start with the percentage rankings. Did you know that in Pandas, you can obtain percentage rankings instead of integer rankings? By default, the rank method sets the PCT or percentage to false and returns integer rankings. However, when set to true, the rank function computes percentage rankings that are normalized from 0 to 1. The percentage rankings are useful when you want to compare rankings across different columns regardless of their actual values. They provide a standardized way of measuring an individual's performance or status relative to the rest of the group. This is why percentage rankings are commonly used in fields like education and healthcare. So what exactly is a percentage ranking and how is it calculated? Essentially, the percentile ranking tells you the percentage of values in the distribution that are less than or equal to the given value or have a lower rank. For example, if a student scored 80 out of 100 on a test and the distribution of scores in the class is such that 60% of the students scored below 80, then the percentile ranking of the student score is 60%. Let's look at an example from General Assembly. We're given a data set with SAD scores and the hours studied. Let's preview them. We have to find the 80th percentile of hours studied. In other words, 80% of the students studied less than X hours. To solve this, we will have to use the ranking function while setting the percent to true. As you can see, the top value that is for 200 hours studied gets a percentile ranking of 1 because 100% of the values are ranking below this. In case of ties, ranking is determined by the average percentile rank of the tied group. Another interesting parameter to know is the NA option, which allows you to control how nulls are dealt with during ranking. By default, NA option is set to keep, which means that NAN values or not a number values will be assigned a rank of NAN, that is no ranking. However, you can set the NA option to bottom or top, which assigns either the lowest or the highest ranks to these rows, respectively. Let me show you an example. Here, we've performed general rank, and then one with NA option top, another one with NA option bottom. So we've got the default top and bottom. Let's run the code. As you see, the default option leaves the rank null, but we can change that easily to give it to the top or bottom rank. We can also have the axis or numeric only parameters. The axis tells you whether to rank rows or columns. Most of the time we rank rows and the default option caters to this. However, if you ever find yourself with another dataset type like a time series of KPIs, you might want to rank columns instead to identify the trends over time for each KPI represented by a column. To do this, set the axis to one instead of zero. Again, with the numeric only option, the default option is set to the usual use case, which is ranking based on numeric values. However, if you want to rank both numeric and non-numeric values, like arranging records by name as well, you can do so by setting this to false. Data analysts and scientists typically must be proficient in SQL and Python. So now that you know the variations of ranking in Python, let's discover the equivalent functions in SQL. So let's switch to SQL and let's start with a percentile ranking which I demonstrated earlier in Python. In SQL, you can achieve this by using the percent rank window function. Revisiting the question from general assembly, let's tackle it with SQL instead. So we're using the percent rank window function over here. So let's run the code. By default, nulls are at the bottom and therefore get the largest rank that is close to one. This is unlike Python rank function where nulls were not given any ranking by default unless we change the any option parameter. In SQL, even nulls get a ranking and if you want them ranked at the top of the list, use nulls first in the order by clause, like this. Now if we run the code, we can see 
that the nulls are at the top. Now let's check out the rank window function in SQL. Using this guest dataset from Airbnb, we will rank guests according to their age with the eldest receiving the top rank. Recall that in Python, we use the rank function and set ascending to false. It will look like this. In SQL, we will use the rank window function and specify that age should be in the descending order. Now, if we run this query, we can see the same result as the one with Python. So what happens when we've got tied groups? It is using the minimum method to rank tied groups. In case you haven't watched our previous ranking video, the minimum method gives the lowest possible rank to the tied values. For example, the guests with age 27 occupy positions 6 and 7 because of the tie. 6 is used as the ranking of the two. And then there's a famous dense ranking method, which also awards tied elements with the same ranking, but ensures that the next rank is always the next consecutive integer. In another Airbnb dataset of hosts and their listings, we're asked to rank hosts by the number of beds. The more beds there are listed, the higher the ranking. To start with, let's get the number of beds listed by each host. Then let's add in ranking and let's order by number of beds. Now let's run the query, check out the output and there we go. The higher the number of beds, the higher the ranking. Lastly, let's explore the ranking method, which returns a unique rank for every record. In Python, this method is labeled as first. Let's preview the data set here. So Google has asked us to rank each user by the total number of emails sent. Unique rankings are also expected if there are users with the same number of emails sent, we'll rank them a second time using their names. First, let's get the total number of emails sent out by each user. And these are the total emails. Then let's use this as a basis for our ranking. We can use row number function in SQL to create the unique rankings. And there you have it. This is the output. So we've seen ranking methods in Python and SQL. And thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you've deepened your knowledge about ranking through this video. See more Python and SQL tutorials at our YouTube channel. See you there.